colonizing the moon is actually humanity's stepping stone to colonizing the rest of the solar system. If we can get a foothold on the moon, and what I mean by foothold is manufacturing things on the moon, building rockets on the moon, launching out of the lunar gravity well is way easier than launching from the Earth and really could be our springboard to the rest of the solar system. Now, to have a really sustainable lunar colony, you need a lot of water. And hauling all of that water all the way from the Earth to the moon is really expensive because water is really heavy. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a lot of water already on the surface of the moon that we could use for our lunar colony? Well, it turns out that we now know that there's not only just a little bit of water on the moon, there's actually a lot. The current estimates are something on the order of 600 billion kilograms of water already on the moon for free in the form of frozen ice. Now, almost all of it is in the polar, north or south polar regions of the moon, because in those regions of the moon, they don't get any sunlight coming from the sun, and there's permanently shadowed regions down there. This is a distribution of the water that we've already measured with space probes in some of these craters near the lunar south pole. Now, one of the biggest craters in the polar region is called Shackleton Crater. It's something like 21 kilometers in, di in diameter. Here's a picture of it. You can see that it's totally black in the center. The uh, sun's rays, the photons, are cresting right over the surface in the lip of the crater, but never getting to the bottom. And we now know that there's a ton of water, quite literally, uh, in the lunar regolith. So it's not a frozen lake. It's mixed in with the dirt, so to speak, and we would have to mine it to get it and to be able to use it. Now, this is an artist's rendition of ice in the bottom of the crater. It doesn't really look like that. You can't see it. But again, we know it's present from orbiting spacecraft using spectrometers. And also, we see the occasional meteorite hitting those craters, ejecting up a plume of dust and dirt and also water that goes up there. And we can see that from the Earth and use spectrometers to know there's a lot of water there. Now, what we would do is we would dig up the regolith. We would put it into a furnace, heat it up. That would drive the water vapor out. Out, which we would collect and condense into tanks for use and we would purify it beyond that point. Now obviously we would use it to drink. Once it's purified we could literally drink it. H2O is what makes up water. We could use electricity from solar panels to break it apart. That we could store separately, H2 and O, to make rocket fuel. We could also take the oxygen and breathe it, and we could also use the water for manufacturing. For instance, in milling machines, we often use water to cool the parts as they're machined. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.